always said that we need a hymn of preparation. for these hymns and these spiritual songs that had blood, sweat, and tears but also had faith, hope, and belief that things were going to be better on the other side. And so God, I ask right now that you would continue to take us higher, that you would speak a word to us to encourage our hearts, to encourage our minds that Father, we will accomplish all of what you want for us to do for your glory for your glory for your glory fill me with your holy spirit hide me behind your cross that your word will go forth that it may not come back for we pray and ask it all in the matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ we pray let the saints of god say amen amen come on can we give our band and our choir praise team a round of applause for ushering us through song through this period of worship if you would be so kind take your bibles your devices turn to second samuel chapter six. Second samuel chapter six i want to encourage you that you would in your spare time, read chapters 5 and chapter 6 
for it will constitute the context for which we will attempt to preach and to teach on this morning. But for the sake of our corporate reading, I want to look at chapter 6, verses 21 and 22. As I stated, when you get in your spare time, we're going to preach chapter 5 and chapter 6. Okay? So you go back and read it, but for our sake of our corporate reading on, the mo on this morning, I want to look at verse 21 and 22. When you get it, shout Jesus. Jesus. Hear ye the words of the Lord. So David said to Micah, It was before the Lord who chose me above your father and above all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore, I will celebrate before the Lord. I will be more lightly esteemed than this, and will be humble in my own eyes, but with the maids of whom you have spoken with them, I will be distinguished. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So David said to Micah, it was before the Lord who chose me above your father and above all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Amen. For your, with your prayers this morning, I want to talk with this thought in mind. If you knew like I know. If you knew, like I know. Look at your neighbor next to you and say, neighbor, oh neighbor. Preacher's going to preach about, if you knew, like I know. Look at another neighbor on the other side of you and say, neighbor, oh neighbor. Preacher's going to preach about, if you knew, like I know. If you knew. Like I know. The grass withers, flower fades away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Church as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, the experiences that we journey to fulfill our God given destiny is never linear nor is it easy. If the truth is told, many of us have wanted to throw in the towel trying to discover our purpose and the plan of God that he has for our life despite the pain and the suffering that often comes our way for our spiritual and emotional development. It is why I believe, church, that many of us can both sympathize and empathize with our friend David. David, the shepherd boy, the youngest son of Jesse, that ruddy yet handsome young man who was anointed by the prophet Samuel to be God's king over Israel. But church, there is a problem. The problem is, is that Israel already has a king. And the journey of David's development is in what we call the school of hard knocks. It is what Dr. Gene Getz says that few are enrolled and even fewer people graduate. That David experiences through his personalized curriculum proved to be spiritually, emotionally, psychologically and physically challenging for David because in David's development he had both the mountaintop experiences I'm talking about the experiences when he was able to kill Goliath that experience allowed him to get invited into the king's palace and become a servant of the king by his God-given gift of being a musician to soothe the king's soul. But then David also had those valley experiences. 
Those valley experiences, church, happened when that same king heard them ladies say Saul killed his thousands. But David kills his ten thousands. And the Bible says that from that day forward, Saul had in his heart that David was going to be the king and he tried to kill him from that day forward. But church, when God brings you through the ups and downs of life, when he brings you through the school of hard knocks where you and I are actually being developed, we can't help but to respond to people when they ask you and I, why do we worship and praise God the way that we do? Where well, your mindset should say and should be able to testify if you knew what I know. In other words, as the psalmist says, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. I got a testimony that cannot be written down but actually need to be verbalized and expressed unto my God and the way that I do that often is how I end up worshiping him. Well, there are three spiritual nuggets in this narrative that I hope would help us so you can have a mindset and an understanding that if you knew what I know, you wouldn't be questioning how I worship my God. Well, my worship, first of all, is authentic before the Lord. It is authentic before the Lord. The reason it is authentic, we see uh, with David, is because God fulfilled his promises to David. God fulfilled his promises to David. If you go back to chapter 5, God had united the kingdom of Israel underneath David's rule. In other words, God had fulfilled his promise to David and the aftermath of understanding that God had fulfilled his promise, God and David, uh, God had placed on David's heart that he wanted to move the ark of God uh, to the city of God, the city of Jerusalem, the city of David. And the Bible says that David became greater and greater for the Lord of God was on his side. Church, when God has fulfilled his promises to you, and when God is on your side, and he has extended favor in your life, you and I can't help but to have an authentic worship experience to our God. You ain't got time to play church. You ain't got time to look dignified when God has done something for you that you cannot do for yourself. Yes, it might look strange to some folk. Yes, it might be unusual for others. But when God has been good to you, when God has healed you, when God has kept you in your right mind, when God has provided for you, when God has given you peace that surpasses understanding, when God has given you joy in the midst of chaos, when God has given you faith, when God has given you hope, when God has given you love, when God has given you patience, when God has given you forgiveness, when God has given you strength in your life, you come in the house of the Lord skipping and dancing and say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I should have been in the same asylum. I should have been cracked out, doped out, sexed out, weed out everything out but thank God for his grace thank God for his mercy thank God for his kindness and I'm still shouting on God and for God because I'm thanking him for his forgiveness because I'm one of those folks that ain't always did what I needed to do didn't always follow him but thank God the blood of Jesus Christ cover all of my dirt all of my sins all of my miscues and God restored me that I come in enter into his gates with thanksgiving I come in enter into his gates with praise I come in being thankful unto him I come and bless his name why because the Lord has been good and so David's worship 
was from the heart. Our worship should be from the heart. And it is more important that my worship be from the heart than what I look like in worship. If you knew what I know, then you wouldn't question how I praise and worship my God. Because my worship, here it is, is authentic before the Lord. But not only is it authentic, but my worship is a reflection of God's grace towards me. God's grace in chapter 6, verses 1 through 11, was extended to David. Church, all of us need to be aware of the dangers of thinking that where you are today is a, res is a result of something you did. Because some of us can have amnesia and forget that it was God that elevated you. It was God that provided for you. It was God that opened up those doors so you can have what you have, so you can be who you are today, and you can give him glory because it was all of him and none of us. But I love this because what David does, he falls victim to the amnesia and the culture of the world. To think that he got to where he is as the king of over all of Israel by himself. Because in chapter 5, ladies and gentlemen, David did not move without consulting God. He did not move, he did not do anything without talking to God the Lord but when you look at verse 1 he's now wanting to have this procession and he's now in this political mode of bringing these 30,000 men with him instead of consulting with God in the process of what the law says and how they were supposed to transport the ark and so what happens is David didn't consult God and he engaged in political pageantry and he follows, church, the pattern of the Philistines and we see that in 1 Samuel chapter 6 when they stole the ark in verse 7 by placing the ark of the Lord on a cart. When the law says in Exodus 25 verses 12 through 15 that the ark of the Lord, which is the, uh, the presence of the Lord, was supposed to be carried by the priest. And therefore what happens is they are on their way up to Jerusalem. The ark of the Lord is on a cart. You got men in front, men on the side. And men behind. And yet, they got to a threshing floor, and the Bible says that the ark was getting ready to tumble over, and a brother by the name of Uzziah reached out his hand and touched the ark. Now, he thought he was trying to do a good deed by keeping it from toppling over, but on the other principle, God is still holy. And you can't treat God any kind of way. And because they didn't follow the patterns of God, before, or because they didn't follow the principle of God, because they didn't follow the law of God, God, in his holiness and righteousness, killed Uzziah right there in front of everybody. Well, the Bible says that David gets angry. He's mad at God because he thought that Uzziah was just trying to do a good thing. But David, you forgot that you didn't get here by yourself. You forgot to come and talk to me so that I can tell you exactly what you were supposed to do. And therefore, church, there are some times when we worship our God and our worshiping our God is a part of us realizing how messed up we really are. Because anytime you mess up, 
it brings about a conviction and God shows you grace. It brings about a conviction. I know I ain't supposed to be where I am today. And because I am, he's just given me grace. And in the process of grace, I'm worshiping you, God, because you didn't kill me like you could have. Watch what he does. Anytime we do something out of the principles of God's word, there we are consequences either to us or to people around us. It's quiet right there. I, I, I said anytime we don't do it exactly the way that God says to do it, then, then what happens is either we get hurt or somebody around us get hurt. But I love this in the midst of this tragic story, there's still grace. Because the grace is, is that God is so patient enough. God is so forgiving and God is so good and God is so kind that the God I serve, which is the God of the Bible, guess what he'll do? He'll give you a second chance. I thought y'all would have shouted right there. Because I know I'm looking at some folk that have had 16th, 25, 100 chances. But you can't shout on the second chance. See, we've gotten too comfortable and we've taken God's patience, not in light of him being patient, but we've taken it for granted. God don't have to give you a second chance. But when he does... And he allows you to get it right. Then when you get it right, you ought to be able to worship God in the fullness of what he has allowed you to do. And in the grace of what he has allowed you to do. I love this because now the text says that David, wait a minute, he heard. They went down and, and, and they took the ark of the Lord down to Obed's Edom's house. And it stayed there three months. But David got word that Obed-Edom was getting blessed because of the Ark of the Covenant or the Ark of God. And so as a result, David says, no, wait a minute. We were supposed to be bringing that to the city of Jerusalem and the city of David. And so let's go down and go get it. And they did. But now what David does is follows the principle that is laid out in God's word in Exodus 25. He's now carrying and having the guys carry the ark. And David is making sure he get it right with the Lord. That upon their sixth step, God placed on David's heart and mind, I need to make sure I sacrifice to the Lord. In other words, I need to make sure I'm doing exactly what the Lord wants me to do because it helps me to realize he's given me a second chance. And when David had a second chance, you know what David did? He worshiped God and he danced. He, 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 he danced. He, he danced. What do you mean he danced? I said he danced with all his might and all his strength. Because of what the Lord allowed him to engage in once again. And church, if God has shown you grace on top of grace. By giving you a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth chance. You got to realize, and, and the folk around you, you got to realize... Don't be surprised when God has given me all these chances that my inner man takes order over my outer man. Y'all missed that. Because when your inner man, which is grateful unto God, takes over your outer man, moving your feet, moving your hands, causing your mouth to open up. And say things unto God. It's because of what's happening on the inside. Because he's given me a second chance. And that's why I cannot allow 
people to regulate my worship. Because my worship and my dancing is not for people. My praise ain't for people. My shout is not for people. My worship is not for people. It's for the one who knew when I messed up and he still gave me grace. It's for the one that when I fell short, he dust me off and told me to try again. It's for the one that is able to keep me from falling and to present his faultless before his presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. It's for him that I dance. It's for him that I worship. It's for him that I praise. And don't you let nobody on your left or your right keep you from praising your God in spite of the challenges of your life. If you want to go ahead and open up your mouth, open up your mouth. If you want to go ahead and clap your hands, clap your hands. If you need to dance all around this sanctuary this morning, baby, put on your dancing shoes. Do what you do. You don't need no organ. You don't need no drums you got an inner beat on the inside because of what God has done in your life that I'm motivated not trying to be like nobody else I'm motivated not trying to impress nobody else but I'm motivated for what the Lord has done and excuse me up front but I didn't come to be impressive to you I come to give him the glory I come to give him the honor I come to give him the praise I come to worship him because he's been too good in in my life it's called grace there's a story of a older woman an elder Stasbury she was in uh, a nursing home and uh, she was in the nursing home and every time the uh, the, the nurse or the uh, the, uh, the uh, custodian would come in she would say thank you Jesus they, um, they, they, they would take her to uh, lunch and dinner uh, and, and breakfast. She would say, thank you, Jesus. They would be out uh, playing bingo, and uh, she would say, thank you, Jesus. And somebody said, man, why is she always saying, thank you, Jesus? And the uh, lady said, well, you got to hear her testimony. They said, well, when she was young, uh, she was on this boat with a couple of friends of hers. Everybody else could swim except her. The boat ended up casting cast over, and what happened is everybody lost their life except the one who could not swim. She says she got older, she got married, uh, and forgot that, 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 that something was on the stove, and she lost everything in a house fire, but God spared her life. Then she says, she says, but then you got to realize uh, my company, who I retired from, was laying off everybody. But somehow my boss called me and he said, I don't know, I just got this feeling that we need to keep your position when we have laid off everybody else. She said, so when I start thinking about what the Lord had done in my life, and I start thinking, and then I start thinking, because I be thinking, and then I start thinking, and when I start thinking, and thinking, and thinking, and thinking, and thinking, and thinking, it comes out of my mouth, and it says, thank you, Jesus. And I'm wondering, is there anybody in the house that can begin to think and think, that can begin to think about what the Lord has done for you, and begin to thank the Lord for what he's done for you. You ought to open up your mouth. I know you ain't been through all of what that lady been through, but you've been through something. Open up your mouth. Give God praise. Tell him thank you because of what he's done in your life. He's done it. He is worthy of all the honor. He is worthy of all the praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is worthy to be praised. So watch this. Watch this. Here we go. We, 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 we almost finished. We almost finished. Here it is. If you knew what I know, 
my, 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 my worship is authentic before the Lord. My worship is a reflection of God's grace towards me. And my last point, my worship will not change due to the opinions of others. Look at verse 21 and 20. And as a matter of fact, I want you to back up to verse 20. Verse 20 says, But when David returned to bless his household, Micah, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David. How the king of Israel distinguished himself today. He uncovered himself today in the eyes of his servant maids as one of the foolish ones, shamelessly uncovered himself. So David said to Michael, it was before the Lord who chose me above your father and above all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore, I will celebrate before the Lord. I love this because the Bible says that she despised, early on in the chapter, that she despised David in her heart. She had saw David praising and dancing after he got a second chance. After he got a second chance, she saw him praising and dancing along with all of Israel. Now David is bringing the ark of, uh, of the Lord to Israel. He places it in a tent. And the Bible says that he ends up, here it is, blessing the people of God. He, he, he ends up distributing cakes of bread, raisins to every man and every woman. He blessed the people of God because of the favor of God. And the fulfillment of the promise on his life. But the text also says that when he tried to go home and bless his own house. Watch the drama. Because this, this thing is better than marriage to medicine or better than nephew Tommy. Ready to love. It's better than the housewives of a ladder. This, this thing is... Hey... Hey, watch the drama in the text. I know y'all trying to be holy, but these are real people. He, he come home and watch the shade that the text gives. They, they, they say this is Saul's daughter. I know some of y'all read that, didn't understand the implications of that. Because uh, they're trying to say that she's acting like the hater that her father used to be. Texas providing some shade that we can look at because she should have been David's wife. That's how it should have been captured but she's Saul's daughter and she is verbally attacking him and a notice she because she observed his behavior of dancing and praising the Lord before the people. She says something in verse 20 accuses him of things but then David, watch this. He says, hey, I wasn't dancing to try to impress people. That's the Rankin translation. I was dancing before the one who put me where I am today. And to stick a dagger in you, he chose me over your daddy and all y'all people. <laughs> I told you it's drama in the text. David, you ain't have to do it like that, but no, nah, I need to tell you the truth if you want to go there. He said, y'all got to have imagination and reading. If, if, I, if I ever teach Bible study or methods, I'm going to tell y'all how to read imaginatively. You, you got you to read it in the text. And so David lets her know what the real deal is and why he dances and praises the Lord the way that he do. And David got to a point, I don't care what nobody thinks about how I worship the Lord because of what the Lord has done in my personal life. And so David's worship, ladies and gentlemen, is tied 
to the goodness of the Lord. In other words, because God had been good to David, he couldn't help but to dance. He couldn't help but to praise. He couldn't help but to be in uh, her language undignified before others because I can have the authority and still be humble in my worship unto the Lord because of what the Lord has done in my life. In other words, God was good to him. And because he experienced the goodness of the Lord, it provides us a pattern of understanding and appreciation. God is looking at all of us, those in the building and those that are watching online. How do you respond to my goodness? Do you praise me? Do you dance before me? Knowing that. That I'm the only reason you are where you are today. And it may not be where you want to be. But thank God well, you ain't where you used to be. Church, God has been too good for us. Too good for us, for us to be quiet. And for us not to have the mentality that every Sunday morning or every day I get an opportunity, I'm going to worship my God. Can't sit down. I got to open up my mouth. I got to dance. I got to, I got to say amen. I, I got to respond to what the Lord has done in my life. Some of you still ain't got it. Let me all. Uh, um. Last, last year, um, around the latter half of October, when they, the world celebrates the latter half of October, and the culture changes, um, I was in Dollar General. And um, it was just me, the cashier, and the lady and her son was uh, before me. He was sitting in the um, basket. And they were giving out candy that day because it was the last day of October. Y'all get that? And the cashier says, hey, listen, you want some candy? He asked the mother. She said, yes, he can have some. And she he put out that, uh, that uh, bucket and he said, listen, get as much as you want. He said, uh-uh. Uh -huh. So he looked around. He said, no, you, you don't got to take one or two. Just stick your hand in, grab, and you can get as much as you want. Say, uh-uh. So his mama started looking at him. Baby, I said you can have. He said, uh-uh. He said, I want you to give it to me. So the dude said, oh, okay. So he said, but stick your whole hand in there and give it to me. So he stuck his whole hand in there and gave it to him. They checked out, and before they got to the door, I noticed she said, son, why, why, why did you have him to give it to you? She said, because his hands were bigger than mine. <laughs> and as long as the resource is bigger than mine, then it can bless me like I can't bless myself. Come here. God is saying he is the resource. His hands has been bigger than anything that you could ever do. And when he decides to bless you, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask or think. You just need to trust him right where you are and tell people if you knew like I know that the Lord has been good. May God bless you. May he keep you ears my prayer.